Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to Six Months Later, the podcast, 180 Days in the Making, where we talk to interesting people about their lives, and then we check in with them six months later to see if their life is still interesting. And if it's not, we <laughs> throw that episode away. I am your host. My name is Matthew Shadorn, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host. Tara Newton-Wordsworth. Hello there. Hi, Tara. How are you doing today? I'm super. How are you, Matt? I'm all right. You sound sarcastic there. That, <laughs> sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, I I am no i am i'm pretty good are how are you right? doing oh, i'm all right you know i've been having a pretty low-key week we got a new tv which is very exciting oh my gosh that's so exciting it is very exciting it is my you know that's our window to the world and uh <laughs> got a new tv you know because we got a baby on the way that's and, the most important thing i i believe with the baby thing it's like have make sure you have a massive tv yeah yeah i think that's good you want to get the kid in front of the tv right away like you're a parent yeah like that's the thing you want to max start teaching him time. but no we got a 4k tv it was an early christmas present uh for my father-in-law and so that oh, was oh that's nice. nice so that was exciting so finally upgraded to 4k which is good because i have tons of 4k blu-rays that i've just been not appreciating them in full high definition and uh and, it's, and so now my life's really turning around <laughs> And, uh, wow, that's beautiful. And uh, yeah, so it was great. Last night we watched uh, Blu-ray and it was exciting. What, what what Blu-ray did you watch? We watched The Devil's Backbone, the Guillermo del Toro scary movie. It's about It's about wow. a ghost, which doesn't seem like something I would like, but mm. it's a very, uh, it's it's a good movie. It's also about the Spanish Civil War, which seems like something I would like. Oh, Not necessarily. I mean, I'm not like, I don't know, that makes it sound like I'm like pro-fascist, but I'm not. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good. <laughs> wow. It's like, well, I mean, I, I do love a little fascism. I mean, <laughs> no, um, no. On I'm the side. Very anti-fascist. But uh, <laughs> uh, this is a Antifa podcast. We watched Devil's Backbone. I highly recommend it. And then, yeah, that was very exciting. I genuinely thought you were going to say Devil Wears Prada. And I was going to be like, yes, I love it. Finally. Streep. Meryl, Meryl Streep. in high def. She is flipping amazing. Yes. What a woman. I don't need high def to appreciate Meryl Streep. She's just... She's great in any level of definition. Yeah, truly blissful. Yeah. I actually never seen Devil Wears Prada. It's, it's, oh my gosh, Matt. I've been meaning you to. You have to watch it. It's, it's on my watch list. I just haven't gotten around to it. She's so good. I know. She's so good. I know she's very good in that. I've, I've heard. But it's also one of those ones where, like, because she was nominated for an Academy Award, you think it's going to be sort of serious and then you watch it and it's totally just like a fun movie yeah. but she's really bloody good in it so yeah. i probably shouldn't say bloody because you guys think of that as like a proper swear word don't you in right. america we don't think of it as anything do you not no, we don't use oh, it in great. america what? <laughs> anyway bloody hell mine what yeah sorry what is uh what's new with you anything new this week what is new with me oh god i literally have no idea i feel like i feel like uh no it's just nothing really there's it's literally just my life is just the same every day you know like as in i feel like there's literally nothing that changes it's just charlie has nursery charlie doesn't have nursery we go for a walk you know i mean this is sounding depressing but i i swear it's it's quite nice you know there's a certain uh enjoyment in the routine i suppose no i don't know yeah i guess so all i think about is just wanting to be in australia at the moment i think i just wish i was somewhere hot but because of the yeah. bloody quarantine sorry i'm swearing so much on this one again bloody is not a swear word <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But yeah, are you getting ready for Christmas then? Because it is mm. December 12th, Oh, yes. December 7th. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No, we put up Christmas lights. That was really nice. The boys love it so much. And Sammy, who's one and a half, is constantly saying what he thinks is Christmas tree, but sounds like, wee, wee, wee. and it's so cute. And he says it all the time. Wee, wee, wee. And, the penguin. Uh, <laughs> I mean, wee, it wee, does. Wee, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> all the, like, constantly. And, uh, yeah, so we put up lovely Christmas lights and that's been really fun and you know, so getting getting more festive, which that's is good. which is nice. Do you have any predictions for six months time? Six months time. Uh July seventh, is that right? No, June seventh. Wait? No. Yeah. I have no idea. Uh wait, is that right? Is it June or July? Shit. Or is it May? No, I think it must As be. in like January, February, March, April, May, June. No, it's June. June seventh. I don't know. Uh, what about you, Tara? What do you got? In six months' time, yeah, I reckon we're going to be coming out of chaos. The vaccine will be getting more and more widespread. People will be getting more and more confident, and there'll be less and less cases of COVID. 
and we're going to see a much brighter future, especially coming into the summer. We're going to be able to travel again and go on vacation mm. and be in hot places. It's going to be bliss. That's what that's what I'm well, that's the mind like that's a positive mindset I'm having in terms of oh God, what am I trying to say? I that is the positive outlook I am choosing to have. Oh, actually, I do have a prediction, and it is that I will probably be sick of my parents in June because I think they're going to be coming over as soon as they can once the baby's born. And so by June, uh, I'll probably be a couple months into them visiting. Oh, my God. Are they going to stay for a couple months? I don't know. I can't imagine that they won't. I feel like that means, yes, they will they definitely will probably, stay for yeah, a couple I months. They were like, even before we had a baby, the last time my parents came to visit, they were kind of like wandering around our neighborhood and being like, oh, we could just rent an apartment here if they had a baby like this is even before we were even talking about having a baby but yeah uh, my get... parents said a similar thing they were like we could buy a place here it's like please do not buy a place here. <laughs> see that's what i was i'm trying to get my parents and my father-in-law to go habsies on an apartment nearby <laughs> and then they can like have a timeshare where they come and visit our baby yeah mm -hmm. i mean i feel like i'd rather just like pay for them to i think this is that's the nice thing when people live nearby is that they can just drop around for a cup of tea now and then and it's not a big deal whereas when you're far away it's like you then have to spend a really intensive two months together when you see each other yeah. every day but yeah so that's good good predictions looking forward to the future Hope everybody's having a nice June. Let's get on with our guest, Mr. David Plotz. Yeah, love to. All right. Hi, and welcome to the show, CEO of CityCast and co-host of the Slate Political Gabfest, Mr. David Plotz. Uh, David, how are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. You doing all right? I'm a big fan of the Slate Political Book Gabfest. Been listening for many years. You guys are just about to hit your 15 year anniversary. Is that right? We hit our 15 year anniversary. We're unclear whether we've actually hit it or we're about to hit it, but we are celebrating it <laughs> here in December <laughs> of 2020. We're sure. about to do a live show for that this week, and we're going on the Colbert show this week so it's pretty exciting oh wow that's oh, wow. amazing that is really neat that's great do you still feel like it is exciting to do the the, the gab fest and you know do you still get excited to talk to your friends with about politics and everything still i get excited to talk to my friends i love john and emily obviously the main reason we have kept doing this over 15 years which is just an ungodly amount of time in podcast years <laughs> it, i think yeah. we're truly one of the oldest podcasts out there is because we love each other and we genuinely like to spend time together and we don't because we've all moved to different cities. When we began, we were all in the same city, but now we live in different cities. And because we're all in different cities, it's a chance for us to gather. And, uh, and that's delightful. I think politics is just hard to talk about <laughs> yeah. uh, in general, but it's fun to talk to them. And John has this wisdom and Emily is just the smartest person on her issues in the whole world and that kind of has the clearest mind. So I feel like I have a ringside seat with some two very, very impressive people and I just get to throw spitballs at them. Yeah, and I, I'll say that living in the UK, I'm still trying to keep up with American politics and, and things uh, and, and your podcast has been a very big help for that. So, and I, yeah, and I, I enjoy it immensely. But uh, recently you're working on a new project right? Would yes. So I've started a company called CityCast. It's funded by Graham Holdings. Graham Holdings is a big American conglomerate that used to be known as the Washington Post Company back when it owned the Washington Post, but it sold the Washington Post to Jeff Bezos, but it remains this big conglomerate that has a lot of different business interests. And one of them is podcasting. And I began to talk to the CEO about a year ago about why there was no really successful model for local news podcasting. And he had a thesis that there was no successful model because no one had tried it. So what we're going to try to do is build a network of local daily news podcasts in cities around the US and maybe one day around the world and couple that with a daily newsletter and see if we can figure out how to make that work both as a business and as something that's valuable in bringing a community together and bringing interest and and care to local issues, which right now suffer. How far yeah. into that project are you now? Not that far. We're going to launch in two cities this winter, probably in February or March. So right now it's just me and a couple of other people. I've hired the starting team and then we're deciding on who the hosts are going to be in our new cities, in our launch cities. And we're going to launch in two cities in the in the winter and then hopefully a third city later in the year and see how that, how that goes. And if that works, then we will expand out and hopefully build a network of dozens, scores of 
of city casts in cities around the country. Oh, that's really great. Is the model kind of like, you know how NPR, NPR has their Up First podcast, which is kind of a digest of the daily news, or like the New York Times has their daily podcast, which is kind of one long story. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be somewhere in between there or is it going to be up to the people in the different cities, kind of how they want to run it? Or It'll be more like The Daily than it is like Up First. I actually don't believe that this is a news podcast. I use the word news uh, okay. in my description. But fundamentally, podcasting is a very bad informational medium. Mm -hmm. It is a bad way to get information compared to, say, reading it on a sheet of paper right. because audio just drifts by you. You forget you and you can't go back and refer to it. But it's an incredible emotional medium. And so mm -hmm. the point of CityCast is going to be to make people care about what's happening in their cities. And so the goal is really to have hosts who are much more like, uh, I mean, to use a couple of American examples, the way what old timey newspaper columnists were like, like a Jimmy Breslin or a Mike Royko, or what Oprah Winfrey was like in her earliest days when she hosted a show at AM Chicago. Somebody okay. who is who is journalistic in their interests, but is really there to convey passion about the city, who loves the city more than anybody else loves the city, and who thinks it's more fucked up than anybody else thinks it is, and who's <laughs> who's determined to you know share their joy and their rage in equal measure. And I think podcasting is actually the ideal medium to do that. I think that's that is what podcasting was built for. And the the show is going to be built less around we are going to hit these news beats. You know, we're going to get weather and traffic on the eights. It's not going to be like that. Right. It's going to be much more about here's a subject that the today that our host is concerned about, and they're going to convey a kind of authenticity and, and emotion around it that will hopefully be infectious. Mm. So it's not necessarily to educate and inform as much as it is to give people a sense about why they should care about what's happening in their community. Yeah, and kind of bring people wow. together more as a community. What what made you want to start it? Well, I think I had just come off running a startup called Atlas Obscura, and I love the process of building something. I think, by the way, Atlas Obscura, I love that site so much. It's such a fun th site. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It was a joy to work there and yeah. and help build it. I uh, always look at it whenever I'm traveling anywhere. I always consult Atlas Obscura. Yeah, so not much these days then. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, well, I think I so I like I like building things. I have a really long experience in digital media. I was at Slate in the earliest days of Slate. So I've been in online journalism from the beginning. I've been in podcasting, as we mentioned, like for a million years. And and I st got my start in journalism and local journalism as a reporter for a, an alternative weekly here in DC. And so this CityCast felt like a kind of way to mix all of those things together. And also because I really, I think that local, like we've all been addicted to Trump here in the US for the past four years in a way that's deeply unhealthy mm. yep. and and demoralizing. And actually what happens in the community around you is in a lot of ways much more important and much more relevant to the state of your life. And if I can nudge people, like and slightly nudge them, this is me nudging, visual picture, <laughs> me nudging, <laughs> he's nudging good. people. It's a solid nudge, folks. You can't see it, but he's... <laughs> towards paying more attention a little bit to what's around them as opposed to what's happening off in the White House, then maybe that's some good. Mm. Yeah, I think, yeah, that is so key. And, and the state of local journalism is so just kind of wrecked by various economic forces. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad you're out there kind of on the front lines trying to get people more interested in what's going on local government, local city, and you know, within their own cities. That's amazing. It's an amazing, it sounds like it's such an amazing project. Uh, I, I, yeah, I was really excited to talk to you about it. You mentioned it on the podcast a few weeks back. But yeah, so new project and kind of in the early days. Can you give us a hint what cities you're starting out with or? This is not airing for six months. Right? Yeah. It won't come out till June, so you can tell us yeah. whatever you want. Yeah. You don't want to. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think if I had to guess today, I think we're going to launch in Denver. Okay. And in Chicago, that would be my guess. With it, it might be Denver and DC. I'm pretty sure it's going to be Denver. Okay. So I would guess it's Denver and Chicago, and by. June, we might have added a third city. We might have a third city lined up. And that third city, I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's like a more offbeat city. It's like not quite so mainstream either because it's it's not because it's not a large city, but it's less sort of central to the media narrative of the country. Okay. Maybe Detroit, maybe Oakland, maybe a borough of New York City, like Queens or something. Oh, okay. If I had to guess what the, the third city 
might be. Uh, and hopefully we will we will have two up and running and a third kind of in the works by June. Mm, exciting. So what is kind of the so what is the business model with this just kind of advertising within the podcast and, and your network would kind of take care yeah. of that and distribution and then your local pods of people would do the journalism, the on the grounds work. So the, the business model will be worked out uh, as we go but we as we see it there are national advertising podcast there's national podcast advertising revenue which will be possible as we grill mm -hmm. as we build the network there is local podcast advertising revenue which right now is a really small thing it's yeah there's almost no local podcast advertising revenue because it's very hard to track where your listeners are so mm -hmm. someone listened to your podcast you don't necessarily even know if they're in chicago or denver you don't you're not really sure where they are you haven't maybe you have an ip address and that's about it but the ip address may not even be worth anything so it's so the local targeting is is harder than you would expect it's much harder than it is for digital advertising uh, but we think that by the time we're up and going there will be both national and local podcast advertising we think there will be newsletter advertising so we're going to have a daily newsletter and that's a that's a robust economy already and then and in the long run, once we've built something that people like and care about, mm -hmm. we would like to have a subscription or membership model. We believe like it, we have to find a way for users to pay for this and for users to be the prime backers of it uh, and listeners to be the prime backers of it. That's, again, hard. It's there's not a lot of successful podcast subscription models or even membership models that, that I can point to. So it's going to require us to solve a bunch of tricky problems. But it... It's 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 also the case that like without a podcast that people like, without a set of podcasts that people like and are actually addicted to, none of it works at all. Mm, so that sure. to me is the first like solve that first problem or go after that first problem first and hardest. And then once we have traction on that, I'll right. focus more on like, okay, let's we've got a good audience. People like it. Let's see what we can do to monetize it. Mm. Right. You get the product and then you sell it. Yeah. Well, oh, that's, that sounds amazing. That sounds like intense, like a lot of, a lot of work. <laughs> I, I don't envy you. Uh, <laughs> well, no, I envy you. Uh, well, I don't know. It sounds like an amazing project. I don't know, but I'm just lazy. <laughs> David, part of this is obviously comparing your life now to six months time. So what, what's been happening in your life basically? Like, as in, what are you up to day to day? How have you found the recent times? Yeah. I, I, first of of all, I mean, not first of all, because we're 15 minutes in or however long we're in, in, in your podcast time. Uh, I love the premise of this. I think it's a great idea. So mazel tov on that. And I'm oh, excited you. to think about it. I think it's, it's, it's so nice to get a chance to think backwards and forwards in the way that you guys are doing it. Um, Thank you. So I've had a really tumultuous year. I've had an extremely tumultuous year oh. because in the last, you know, you, well, not in the last year, but in the last recent vintage my marriage fell apart i'm so sorry uh, yeah. thank you and you know i've moved so that you know my ex and i are we're living very close but i'm living now in an apartment and so our kids are going back and forth and so that's a whole new living arrangement so that's kind of up in the air you know i left a job that i'd been at for many years quite joyfully at atlas obscura right as pandemic started to go do something else and then pandemic turned everything topsy-turvy and so you know, I, I spent six months kind of figuring out, okay, what's the next thing? I, what's the thing I want to do next? And, you know, and then there's sort of the post post uh, marital collapse dating and all of that. And so there's just, it's just been, it's been a real, oh, and there's like a whole bunch of stuff with my, my father has dementia. And so that's been, it's been a really tumultuous Oh my period. gosh, I'm so sorry. Wow, that's intense. No, it's, no, it's good. It's been, it's been interesting. It's been very interesting. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't, I don't, it's not been like always the happiest period of my life, but it's definitely been the most interesting couple of years of my life. So that's, and, and I think only in the last like three months have I, has it sort of settled because it, in the last three months I've, you know, we had been doing this thing called nesting where my wife, my ex-wife and I were going in and out of our house and the kids were staying there. Now, like we have two different places. So now I have a home and I have, a, you know, a new job that has a, like a specific direction on it. And so, so what had been deep instability has settled into more routine and that's nice. That's good. Mm. That must've been really hard during COVID though, like is in to, to find a new place and everything with all the, yeah. I imagine restrictions and. Yes. I was just talking to my daughter about this. Like I, she was asking me, Oh, did you see your apartment before you moved in? And I was like, I think I saw it. I think <laughs> I did see it once, but I, I actually can't even remember because I, yeah, I saw, I saw it, you know, for like 10 minutes, I was allowed to go into it. It's uh, yeah, but it, yes, but I, for me actually what, so I'm a person who I'm a person who like a super habitual person, a person who, you know, I'd had a very long and I thought quite stable and happy marriage and didn't realize like the, the 
the reef that it had, was about to crash against. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had come off of a period of extreme, like I'd gone from being like, if, you, if you'd interviewed me for this three years ago, I would have been... I mean, I'm probably still smug and unbearable, <laughs> but I would have been even more smug and even more unbearable and like had a real clear sense of like, oh, everything, you know, I had a clear sense of directionality and like all right. the all the tick marks that I was hitting. And I think what happened was that all of that was deeply kind of turned, uh, turned unsteady mm. and a life that had seemed incredibly steady and to have a, to have a clear direction became a really unsteady. And so... And, and that happened in the year before COVID, actually. And so by the time COVID hit, I had actually just had this incredibly tumultuous period and period where everything that was certain had become uncertain. And, you know, I had no home. I had no job. You know, the, the prime emotional relationship of my life had, had foundered and collapsed. And so, so actually COVID was... Uh, Covid was fine. Oh my god! It was, it was, it was fine relief. because it was. It wasn't that it was a relief. Oh it was god. more like, oh yeah, I've, it was more like I've been through a lot of uncertainty, mm. and I'm ready for more uncertainty. And I actually, and COVID coincided with. You know, I have a very nice girlfriend, and so meeting my nice girlfriend, and mm. and and you know, just getting to spend more time with my kids, and having a new, it just all, all a lot of a lot of things that st stabilized during COVID for me, even as the world has become so horrible and unstable and so it was yeah i have i've had a better pandemic than a lot of people because i think i'd had a pretty well, a much worse period leading up to it than a lot of people what how did you meet your uh, new girlfriend oh tinder oh fantastic tinder. Oh. um was that <laughs> was that during oh. covid or was it yeah how did you support? no no pre it was pre i met her I met her a year ago on pre-COVID. Oh, but great. But just, just spent more time with her come COVID. That's nice yeah. that you didn't have to try That's and... Because nice. I was like, how are people dating during the pandemic? Like how, you know, <laughs> how are you meeting, right. and, you know, if you're meant to be socially distancing and stuff? Right. No, no. I, I had, because I had come off a period of just like extreme, uh, you know, non-monogamy, to put it politely. Um, <laughs> and... <laughs> And so I'm glad you got that off, out of just, your system. <laughs> yeah. And just coming and like COVID sort of COVID made it very clear. And so this woman I'm seeing was, she basically said, you cannot give me some other woman's COVID. Um, and I was like, yeah, that's, that's right. That's a true statement. So yeah. So I don't know, I, but I, from what I've heard from my, my Tinder, more Tinder active friends that people are back out there. There's a lot of, there's a lot of social uh, narrowing happening. Yeah. Oh, social narrowing. Good. Yeah. I don't know. I guess people have just been like, alone for eight months and they're like i don't care if i die now i just need to touch another human being <laughs> right right no i think yeah. that's right yeah that's great so <laughs> a friend of mine said that when he it was during COVID actually and he was like i was there was a the girl at the supermarket she she gave me her number and and she she said i could come over i was like don't do it okay we're still on lockdown <laughs> just stay in your house he's like i'm gonna i'm gonna i was like no I do it. He didn't do it. But it was one of those things where it was desperate times. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, so, you're, so you're dating again, where you're, not, you're dating, you're seeing someone. What other kind of things are going on in your life that are like that you're kind of excited and passionate about? Well, having a, the startup, having. I mean, besides work and stuff, like, are there. Are there other things that you're like that have you taken you, uh, up baking? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I not to not to like just try to cheat here, but like I've given you, you know, New relationship, <laughs> startup, you know, <laughs> new home, uh, and fifteenth <laughs> anniversary of podcast I've been doing. Yeah. Like I feel like I did, You're like I've got I have nothing be, more for you. Do I have to be baking too? I had <laughs> I back know. I had back surgery this Ooh. past week, so I'm right now. I'm feel very. Uh, I'm an extremely active person generally, and I ha oh. I have to not be active, and that's driving me kind of crazy but but i haven't no i mean what, what else i get to spend more time with my kids because they're around all the time which is a mixed blessing <laughs> uh, how old are your kids i have a 20 year old a 17 year old and a 12 year old oh wow and the 20 year old is sort of bouncing around so she's been home for a while which is really or she's going to be home for a bit which is great because she's normally away at college and then the 17 year old and the 12 year old are always here okay so can i ask you something as somebody who has done a podcast for 15 years and we're five months into this so we haven't actually released an episode yet because we have to record six months of episodes <laughs> 
<laughs> before we can actually start putting them out to people. What do you think is like the key to maintaining a podcast for so long? Is it just that you really love talking to Emily and John? Is it just as simple as that? Yeah. I think it is basically it's the human relationship okay. and we make money, but for a long time, we didn't even make money on it. There was a period where we all had, it was where it was, we didn't, we weren't making money and there was no real reason to do it except each other. And I think we are, we genuinely love each other. Mm. Like genuinely, there's no, I had a 50th birthday, right before pandemic, had a 50th birthday party. My brother threw me, you know, for a few friends and they were absolutely there at, you know, we did a house party and they were absolutely there. And Mm -hmm. Emily, you know, when when my marriage fell apart, Emily was one of the first people I talked to about it. Maybe the first person besides my brother I talked to about it. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, it's like wanting to have a conversation with somebody and, and, oh, I mean, sorry. We're also egomaniacs. I mean, I think, I think in our own ways, it's just the attention. It's really nice. It's a, and it's a right. really nice form of attention because it's not overwhelming. It's very kind of in the know mm-hmm. because people only like they, they contact you because of your voice. They hear you like a lot of times what, you know, the, what boosts my serotonin is I'll be somewhere and someone will hear me talking. Be, someone will come up to me and say, oh, I love your show. I'm like, that's so nice. How, how nice that is for someone to do that. So there's a, there's a definite ego boost, which is, which is just the right amount of ego boost because it's not so much that you become unbearable and it's not so much that it actually impacts your life, but it's just mm-hmm. enough that like when you're feeling a little bit down, someone is coming along to say, thank you. So that's great. And yeah. And I think we, we have found, I mean, what do they say about marriage? Like marriage is a conversation that just lasts forever. Like we, this is in a way, this is like the longest conversation mm-hmm. that we've had outside of our marriages. And it's, it's, I, I would listen to Emily talk about legal things and things. I would listen to that, her talk about that any day. You know, you could, I would block out an hour every day to hear her talk about things. If I ever needed something explained to me, I'd be like that. I, I would like Emily to learn it and then explain it to me. Because no one does it <laughs> and If I ever want kind of like long historical context of anything, I'd be like, get, get John in here. Let's get yeah. John in here and get, get, have a, take the long view on this because no one does it better. And I think, and then I think what I bring is sort of like, I am a very, I'm a kind of, it's not that I'm ignorant. It's more just like, I am, <laughs> I'm a, I'm extremely, I mean, I'm a, I'm easily bored. And therefore, because I'm easily bored, I tend to just kind of like to play around. And so I don't mm-hmm. mind just messing around a lot. And I think they, that takes their, it, it, that's the, the leavening because I think if it would, if it was a straighter person in the third role, it, the show would be a little bit boring. But the fact is that I just am so impatient and uh, and dumb sometimes that it makes the show boisterous. So in any case, I guess right. the answer is you have to really like each other. Yes. The answer is you guys better like each other. <laughs> you better want to hang out with each other. And I mean, this is worrying. It's worrying me it a is. lot. Um, <laughs> no, actually, it's it's definitely been nice because as we've gone on in the show, um, I think we've developed more of a friendship, Matt, because we were friends to start with, but it's definitely we, like, um, yeah, it's been nice getting to know each other more. Yeah. I mean, we definitely have the egotism. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> we're fine on the ego. So that's great. Yeah, we did that. I was going to say one time somebody once recognized me at Paddington Station from a stand-up gig I did. And <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I never shut up about that. <laughs> but that's that's uh, so that's great. That's good to know. So that's good. I'm glad we could get uh, some some sage advice. I also wanted to ask you because you're a journalist. You're like the first journalist. We try to talk to a wide variety of people, but you're the first journalist we've actually talked to. What do you think? And we so we're not journalists, but we what do you think makes a really good interview question? Is do you have like a good not not necessarily a good interview question, but do you have like a good rule of thumb when you're going into an interview? Like what kind of you know how to get to like how would you write uh, something like that? Or is that a nonsense question? <laughs> No, I mean, it's, I think it's a really good question. I'm, I, I mean, to me, it's the. Th- I'm often thinking about it in terms of. It depends if your purpose is what's a good question that will extract the right information that I can put in a story. It's a di- very different kind of thing than what's a good question which will get which will create pleasure or insight for my audience that's listening to this. So I think from a podcast perspective, which is more the latter, it is almost always from the best questions that I almost let me start that over. In the in in the case of where you want to extract information, it's right. it's it's much more uh, a process, and you really have to know your material and have to know where you're going and. and not worry so much about exactly how they sound in the response or whether they're going to give you a beautiful story or anything, because that's, you're just trying to extract the right information. But if your purpose is like, I'm doing a podcast and I want this to sound good and I want this to be vivid for my audience, I have found that the best questions actually almost never have to do with the 
the obvious subject at hand, and they mm-hmm. more have to do with something about the the person or something unexpected about them, something personal about them, and that that is a much better way to get at whatever I'm trying to get at. So I remember we we did an interview for the Gab Fest. We had as a guest the governor of Colorado, a guy named John Hickenlooper, who was mm-hmm. uh, just was elected senator in Colorado. And we were doing a live show in Denver and someone had mentioned to me that Hickenlooper was face blind, that he was a, he was a really successful politician, but he just couldn't recognize faces at all. And I was like, that's not, how is that possible? And so basically we, you know, what was supposed to be a conversation about, you know, whatever was going on in Denver, I, my part of it, I was asking him like, what's it like to be a face blind politician? And how do you do that? Like, how do you get through it? And he, and it was incredible. It was just this incredible moment of him talking about how he, you know, he just assumes everyone, he, whenever he meets anyone, he is just as, assumes a posture of friendliness and is, doesn't, you know, doesn't like just assumes like, like is proud about his ignorance. He talked about how he had just when coming on stage, he had a person had waved at him as he'd come on stage and he'd wave back because he waved always waved back. <laughs> and then he walked by the person, walked right by the person and they said hello. And he realized it was his assistant of 25 years. Like this, is, he'd been Whoa. and he hadn't even recognized her. <laughs> when she'd waved at him and it was just such an it was just such a personal vivid like specific fact about him and i'm sure every single person who went to that show that the only thing they remember about that interview has got to be hickenlooper's face blindness which really had nothing to do with whatever the ostensible matter at hand so i tend to like that tends to be the the kind of the sideways piece of it tends to be what makes me excited rather than the straightforward like tell me about your you know what was what was the most important uh break in your career or whatever it is Hmm. okay oh that's good to yeah I think that's very helpful. Yeah, because we like we really like the premise, but we're trying to be as good as the premise, and that's the problem that we're trying to. Anyways, uh, one thing I, I was interested to to talk to you about is you said that you're a really active person. What what sort of things do you do like day to day? Well, I do I bike. I either bike or do kind of like a cross training workout every day. Mm-hmm. I mean, now mm-hmm. I don't. Now I'm just sitting on my ass. So I bike a ton, and then I walk a ton, and then I just work just like work out and i before i i got back surgery because i was i used to play soccer a lot football as you may know it i used to play (laughs) soccer a lot and i used to play basketball basketball as you may know uh (laughs) i used to play those netball don't you call it netball no that was something else netball is something else isn't it yeah it's different i used to play those a lot but i my back was acting up so i couldn't play it and so i want to be able to play those again so that is what i mean and have you always been like that you've just always been really active it didn't sort of just start for any reason i think maybe when i was a teenager for some i started when i was a teenager and then it's it's just gotten more and more pathological it's also a form of eating disorder i think which is that really? i really i'm a very gluttonous person but i don't allow myself to be glut or feel bad about being gluttonous unless i've been really active and so mm-hmm. i really want to be gluttonous so i choose to be very active so that i could be gluttonous but i like people any friends of mine who have eating disorders have said like that i function like a person with an eating disorder really so, really yes <laughs> wow um, have you ever seen anyone about that no because i'm because it doesn't yeah. no because it feels like i a <laughs> understand it b as long as i'm able to maintain my level of activity it doesn't it doesn't seem harmful i'm not and my weight also my weight doesn't fluctuate and i don't do right. any weird i don't do anything weird i don't like go throw up or i don't starve myself it's more just like i i use food as a reward system in a way that you're not supposed to use food as a reward system oh. so i was gonna say like yeah why would he see anybody he's he's working out like i have the glutton part but i don't have the workout part <laughs> so it's like he has like the positive it's like the best of both worlds there it's like i don't know it's like i had a girlfriend who was addicted to going to the gym at one point and i was just like that seems like the best addiction ever like i don't know <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. like you you hear that that's like a legit addiction i was like i'm not seeing it yeah I, and also i find when i exercise i'm just so much happier i think it's such it's, it's so good for your mental health i would say same. anyway yes same same but um All so right. we're we only have a few minutes left with you and it would be wonderful to talk about your predictions for the future so what would you like what would you like to be doing in six months time what are your predictions for yourself and for the world okay well what i'd like to be doing i hope in six months that we will have gotten city cast off the ground and like have a couple of successful city cast going in in two cities in the u.s so that that would be really great that would be awesome i hope and i think that will have happened i will just be sending my second my middle kid off to college and i hope that that he's heading off to college with like 
a bright heart and and enthusiasm. I I so I'm not quite divorced yet. I think my divorce will be finalized within six months. How do you feel about that? Good. I mean, my my ex and I are very you know we've we've had a pretty we're both pretty fair minded and humane and peaceful people. And I think we and you know want the best for each other and mostly want the best for our children. And so I think we it's been. It's not a. It's not filled with poison the way I think these things can be filled with poison. Thank God, and I hope will not be filled with poison. It's filled with yeah. respect and care. Oh, so, that's and beautiful. I hope that continues. Very nice. And I think, yeah. I mean, I don't know. The world's been so terrible. I assume, like, I you know, I think for the world, the world will have. I think will vaccination will have made a huge difference, and people will be largely back at things, but everything will change. I don't think people will be going to work the way they used to go to work. I don't think they'll gather quite as much as they did, but uh, but in general, we'll be in the right direction. I think here's my, my I think just because I've been watching The Crown, I think, <laughs> and maybe this is a crime to say this in England. I hope I, I hope I don't get you in trouble. I think both the Queen and Prince Philip will die in like in like a matter of days apart. That's my prediction. Oh my like in God. days apart, no. they're going to die. Makes, makes sense. <laughs> No, we get a day off, Tara. Tara, we get a day off. <laughs> so you're happy, Matt, I guess. Well, yeah. Oh, my God. Did you read that? The Guardian did a long piece about it a couple years ago about what was called Operation London Bridge, which is the whole apparatus surrounding when the queen passes away. It's fascinating. Like the best part about it is that apparently there's an alarm that sounds in the BBC when the queen died, but no one's heard it because <laughs> the queen's never died. So they have no idea what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> so every once in a while in the BBC offices, when there, there's a weird sound, they're like, is this it? Is that it? <laughs> is this it? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's like, it's insane. But apparently we get the rest of the day off on the day she died. What? And then we get a whole day off for the funeral. Oh mm. my gosh. I tell you what, if she does <laughs> die, I'm going to blame you, David, because I'll be very <laughs> sad if she's died. No, it would be quite an amazing prediction, though, if it comes true. Like, it, especially it with them both. It's not that amazing. No, but both like of them dying so within this, the same, like a few days of each yeah. other. If that comes true, like, I'll be really impressed <laughs> with your <Yeah>. predicting abilities. <laughs> I guess. And, um, and MI6 might come knocking on your door. Yeah. Um, yeah. I hope, I, I truly hope I don't get you guys in trouble with that. <laughs> no, uh, it's not going to get us in trouble. It's, it's like, because you can't threaten the president. You can't, I'm right. not threatening. I don't wish, I mean, she seems like yeah. a pretty good queen. Uh, yeah. It's not, they're like both in their 90s now, I think. So it's not a huge, like wildly out of the realm of possibility. Right. But um, the uh, my other, here's my other, my other totally off the wall prediction. I was just, I, would, I took your assignment seriously. Is <laughs> I that I think it. there's yeah, going to be, I think there's going to be a novel. I think there's going to be like a successful novel that comes out from a new author. Everyone's okay. going to be really excited. A successful novel from a new author. And it's going to turn out. This new author is an AI bot that it was written by AI. Oh no! And everyone's Ooh. yeah, it's going to be and there will be a photo of the author. The author, the photo itself will have just been like a non-person, and that but the novel will be a well-received book, which everyone thinks is by this this shiny new author, and it's actually a it's actually um, a bot. That literally gave oh, me goosebumps. <laughs> I feel really uh, scared now. I feel like I six months not. is just the right time for that to happen. I think that could just be happening right now. You think so? Six months out. That's a level of dystopia we'll be at. <laughs> <laughs> Terrifying. Uh, um, wow, thank you so okay. much, David. There's some fantastic predictions. I'm really, really... Uh, yeah, I appreciate you taking it seriously. Some people, they completely forget, and then they don't have any good predictions. So. <laughs> I love both those predictions. My pleasure. But David, we're not going to say goodbye to you because mm -hmm. through the miracle of editing, uh, we're going to continue this conversation in six months. But one thing we do ask our guests to do is to either set up a joke or start a statement that they do not know how it is going to end. And then in six months, <laughs> they will will begin the interview with the end of that statement or joke and we'll edit them together perfectly. So it's all seamless. Okay. Uh, have... All right. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a joke. We say that because we talked to a lot of comedians. Yeah. But... So most amazing recipe. So you start with tomatoes <laughs> and onions and then and this is the cool part. The amazing part is you add a ton of olive oil. You put it all in a sheet pan. You add a ton of olive oil and miso, like white okay. miso. And you mix the white miso with the olive oil, salt and pepper, and slow roast that for like an hour. But I'm, when I say a ton of olive oil, I mean like it is an olive oil bath. <laughs> 
Uh, and when it's done, it is like the most delicious thing after you've roasted it an hour, maybe even longer uh, at a low oven. It could be two hours if the oven's low enough. Um, but the oil and the miso get all tomatoey and oniony, and the tomatoes and onions get all jammy. Fantastic. Oh, is, is this like a sauce then at that point? or It could be a sauce. I tend to dip bread oh, in it. Oh, okay, okay. That sounds nice, actually. Yeah, I like that. I was curious where it was going. I was really, I was really like, because it felt like you digged yourself a very specific hole, and I was like how is it gonna get out of this and that's great i honestly thought it was gonna somehow this was gonna be like and then you give it to justice Breyer, and then this is the best thing he's ever eaten in his entire life and he decides to go and pursue that instead of being having a seat on the supreme court uh that would be very on that is very on brand new i no. i have been very much enjoying that in your podcast the the gap fest uh the slate political gap fest you, you have been really driving this joke into the ground of <laughs> justice Breyer. I'm, I'm, I'm as a comedian. I'm, I'm appreciate how committed you are to this bit. It's really great. It is, it is exactly. I had never heard the phrase "committed to the bit" because I'm not a comedian. Oh, okay. And then when I started doing this, I've learned that I am committed to this yeah. bit. <laughs> it's terrible because he. I was assumed, oh, he's going to re- retire, and I can retire this bit, which is that I every week I imagine what Justice Breyer is doing in his post-retirement, and it really irritates John and Emily, who are totally <laughs> sick of it. <laughs> it. It irritates a significant chunk of our listeners, and. And there's this, but the, on the other hand, there's a certain group that really likes it. And I kind of feel like, well, I just need to, if I can just get it to July and he resigns in July, retires in July, then I will, it will be okay. If he, if he clearly is going to come back for another term, I can't, I can't carry this right. out. That would be but, um, too mean. <laughs> to your co-hosts i think it would be too many of my co-hosts and we'd probably wander 15 years of goodwill that we have david how have the last six months been treating you they've been treating me pretty well and i had the, the pleasure of listening to myself you sent me the tape of myself six months ago and it was interesting it was great to listen to myself six months mm-hmm. ago and it's been it's it's been a, but it's been a really good it's been a really good six months mostly mostly work oriented but also lots of stuff with family and girlfriend and the world of course is has changed a lot yeah. so it's been good it's good I'm, I'm glad to hear that that things are going well for you i did want to make a note of your prediction you were half right that uh prince philip died which you were the first person i thought of when i found out prince philip died <laughs> i was like oh he was right i wonder if the, i was like I wonder if the queen's gonna go next and then uh so still half right on that one you were talking about city cast getting city cast up and off the ground and you have started chicago and denver yes so we've started city cast which is a daily local podcast uh-huh. in denver and chicago and we've also done newsletters with them. So they're daily newsletters. And the idea is to build this national network. And I think when I spoke to you in December, that was what I thought the plan was going to be. And indeed, we launched in December in Chicago in end of March, early Mm -hmm. April. And it's been uh, it's been a real adventure. And and I don't know whether the whole thing is going to succeed, but we've created podcasts that are really good and newsletters that are good. And uh, we have a great owner backing it. And I'm I'm pretty excited about it it's it's both i think like super fun and incredibly challenging and that is the definition of a good project yeah so, no i like that's it. great yeah it sounds like you hit those goals that you'd kind of talked about in the first half you got two cities up and running they're they're going strong then yeah they're going strong i mean they, we're doing it it's coming out every day we've got listeners we've got readers it, you know they're not businesses yet they're not successful yet they're sure. not uh, breaking in the big bucks the way this podcast is yet but <laughs> <No>. it's uh <laughs> it's but it's fun it's really fun and i'm confident that if we given time and given given the right insights by me and my colleagues we will create something that can work that's great yeah do you have other cities on the horizon right now or we we're we're kind of yeah so we intend if you talked to me like two weeks ago i've been like yes we're gonna launch two more cities this summer uh but now i'm sort of thinking maybe not maybe we're gonna wait a little bit maybe we'll launch one more city this summer because i i want to i want to have more confidence about the tools to get an audience to the podcast than I have right now. Right now, like we've, we're have we creating podcasts and we have a nice audience and the audiences are growing organically but slowly, but we need to get bigger audiences and I don't haven't yet figured out the tools to crack that. And so I'm reluctant to sort of invest in starting a whole new city until I'm clear about exactly how we're going to take that from zero to 25,000 listeners. Right, right. Yeah, that's that's a trick with podcasts, isn't it? Trying to get people to, to listen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, apparently right. it is. But your your other podcast, the Slate Political Gap Fest, fifteen years. You, I listened to your fifteenth year anniversary special. Very good stuff. That's still going strong. Still enjoying that. Uh, I did. I did enjoy. This is 
kind of side thing, but like in the podcast where you were like the one thing there was a there was a part where you played a section from something that Emily had said and you were like, this is the one thing that I forget what you were saying, like that you would most change your mind over the 12 or the. Yes. Yeah. 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 Which is it was just it something was, that I it was just funny because I remember that very distinctly hearing it the first time and being like it also kind of changing my mind. It was this this idea that Emily had had where she was like she taught her kids not to talk to the cop and right. you had this big argument about why your kids shouldn't talk to the cops and why uh because it was this woman who had uh yeah, it, was, it was a woman who'd left her child playing in a playground by the by the child self not in any unsafe way but by itself and then someone had called the cops on this kid yeah. and this kid and the mother got in huge amounts of trouble the mother was charged with some ne- neglect charge i don't i can't remember what the disposition of it was yeah. and emily was saying you should never call the cops on people and I think especially in the context that I think the child was black, especially a black child in, you know, or you should be very, not never, but you should be extremely hesitant right. to call the cop. And John, not John, me mostly, and John a little bit were like, well, are you crazy? Of course you call the cops, you know, that's, and then sort of the events of the last five years yeah. have really caused me to change my thinking and realize how right Emily was about that as she is right about almost yeah. everything, but she was really right. Yeah, about it's that. funny because it was like, so I think, about, yeah, especially in the context of how uh, times have changed of the last few years i think about how forward thinking she was kind of on that and you know anyways um, <laughs> so some of the other things that we talked about you sent your kid off to college your second kid off to college no my second kid it, he graduates from high school this okay. week so he'll graduate uh, on sunday and he will go off to college this the end of the summer yeah. yeah and and so that's so i'm i'll have gone from three kids at home to just one just just my 12 year old who just walked in the house yeah and yeah so that's but he's he's uh yeah, it's I don't know. It's it's it that is a huge shift. That shift from having child care and child rearing being the sole or the super dominant occupation of your life when you're not working mm-hmm. to it being just one of several things that you focus your attention on is a really big shift and uh nice mostly for the most part. Yeah. Okay. Where are they going far away or He is going to University of Vermont. I live in DC. Yeah. So he's going to go to University of Vermont, which is, you know, it's a short plane ride away, but my family has connections to Vermont. So it, Vermont's a very familiar state to him and uh, then my other child goes to school in Connecticut oh, okay. so also pretty close that's good. Um, yeah I think that's good it's like close enough in case of emergency but far enough away that they're kind of getting their own view of the world you know yeah that's a good way yeah. of putting it I think that's right I don't know like when I first went to college I was like I could have gone to college in Jersey where I grew up and I was like this is too close and I was like I'm going to go to college in Virginia so I went to Virginia Tech which was like it's like this is eight hours away it's good enough distance you know that I can kind of become my own person and whatnot I mean it didn't work I ended up dropping out I was, I don't know. Anyways, that's you neither here nor there. That was years ago. <laughs> so yeah. So what other kind of exciting developments have you had? Are you still seeing the lady you were seeing? I am still seeing her. Yeah, still seeing her. It's been it's been a really nice six months. She's a great girlfriend, great great lady, and it's been lovely. It's been really nice. I have nothing. I have no complaints. Like I I had. I think I said this maybe that I had a really truly I had a really bad 2019, right. but 2020 and so far. 2021 have been really pleasant because a lot of the a lot of the things that were broken have healed a little bit and just found new ways to live and I have this you know lovely apartment and I have this really lovely girlfriend and job I like so it's been yeah and the the girlfriend thing has been has been great we've taken a few trips we went to Charleston and worked there for a week we went uh, to Boston visited with my brother and now that things are opening back up it's just really nice to be out in the world and in society and in company again Mm -hmm. yeah it's it's um it has not i think i was struck i mean this is not to answer that question i was really struck listening to the six month ago me how congruent it is with the me of today okay that it's that it's actually been that the things i thought were going to happen including prince philip dying (laughs) uh have generally happened but in work and in with the children with with my girlfriend uh you know my divorce i was i was not yet divorced i got divorced that went Mm -hmm. through very cleanly and it's not been it's been a pretty busy six months but a very emotionally calmer six months and that's nice that's good yeah so you had a a trajectory for the first half of this year and it seems to kind of like you're sailing just one sail a trajectory uh you're uh, i'm on the trajectory trajectory. you're you're on a course and you're sailing that course and it's it's been been going the way that you you would like Uh, yeah more or less more or less i mean i'm you know you you what is it uh you make plans god laughs what is it yeah so i'm not i'm i'm 
suspicious enough, superstitious enough, excuse me, that I'm knocking my table here. And I'm sure that this means that the minute I stand up, I'll probably fall down and break my leg or something. But it, 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 ha- it has, I think, I mean, I'm a, I'm a person of, I'm a, I'm a relatively calm person who is fairly emotionally steady generally. And so I went through a period of great tumult, right. came out of that period of tumult, and I've sort of returned to my normal state, which is calm. And, and you know, I have, I'm fortunate enough to have work that I like and fortunate enough to have family that I love and friends that I love and like income so that I can support myself. So that makes it all pretty steady. The one thing that's gotten much worse is my father. So my father is, is uh, suffers from dementia and mm-hmm. that's gotten really much worse over the last six months. Mm, but sorry. not in any, but in a kind of continuing, right. you know, in a consistent yeah. way, like in a way that is, was pretty clear was going to continue to happen. So what do you think is the biggest change that you think of you, you've experienced over the last six months? Funny. I mean, in some ways on paper, you know, I got divorced. So you'd be like, oh, that would be it. But it wasn't because the divorce, right. I don't know if you've been divorced, but yeah. like divorce, the actual certification of the divorce is not, at least for me, was not nearly as emotionally wrenching and important as the all the events seeding it. So that wasn't yeah. That's the, thing about the biggest shift. Divorce is like by the time it gets to the paperwork stage, it's like so many other, because I'm, I'm also divorced. So, but like, yeah, by the time that you actually sign paperwork and like sit in front of a judge and they sign off on it or whatever, you've already gone through so many stages of moving houses and all the difficult conversations have basically right. been had and yeah right right you know. right we didn't even get to sit in front of a judge i mean it was on zoom it was like a zoom <laughs> judge she was nice so. she was great it was it was she was very pleasant but lasted three minutes i li- did not say one word i said zero i words. don't think i said any words my my ex-wife didn't even show up she was she had already left town and her lawyer or the lawyer she had engaged it makes it sound like it was like very uh it wasn't it was very amicable and we're still good friends but it, <laughs> it makes it sound like she wouldn't be in the same room with me it's just like no she just left town and it was just her lawyer and the judge and me and it was like okay the what is the biggest thing change if you know maybe i mean it, well, it's okay well i mean i think there are two i guess there are two two one, one is i mean the, neither is that that big is that when i talked to you i had just had back surgery right. and i'd been I'd, I'd come off a lot of pain i'd had a really been frustrated and i feel a lot stronger although truthfully um, a lot of the difficulties are not never going to go away oh, really? and i'd hoped i would be back playing basketball and so forth now and it really is not it's not going to happen but I'm, but I generally feel better. That's number one. Yeah, I was going to ask if you've the other, been able I guess, to is, be, because you were talking about how active you were before the vaccine. Oh, I've been able to be super active. Yeah, I'm hugely active. And so that's great. And uh, like my, my girlfriend is, is a, works out. And so we work out together. That's okay. really fun. And I generally like, I'm sure I'll go for a bike ride this afternoon after we finish up here. Mm-hmm. That, so that's one thing. And the other is that, you know, my, my son, my middle son is about to go off to college. And that is, that's a kind of an, an, an anticipatory sorrow. It is not yet a sorrow, mm-hmm. but it, I anticipate the sorrow. My daughter going off to college three years ago was hugely painful, mm-hmm. and I expect that my son heading off to college will be hugely painful, and it's going to be a big shift because the, the family dynamics, the way it works, it's me and my two sons. When I have my kids, I have my two sons here with mm-hmm. me, and it's just going to be me and my youngest, and then I think that will be it'll be strange and strange for him, for the youngest. Mm-hmm. So, But that hasn't really happened yet. That's just a sort of I'm, I'm dreading it, but it hasn't happened. Hmm. Are you like worried about him being out on his own for the first time, or are you just kind of worried yeah, about very much. how your life is going to change? Much more worried about him being out okay. on his own. I mean, he's he's somebody he's 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 like a super interesting kid. He's autistic though, and so he's like has you know he's never like had the kind he doesn't have the kind of social life and the kind of some of the kinds of experiences in the world that certain other kids do. And so I think it's going to be a big shift for him, which will be, I'm sure he'll do great because he's a great kid. But it's, it's uh, nerve wracking. It's nerve wracking. It was nerve wracking for my I, my eldest when she went off to college. I was really worried because she's she's a she's a very shy person. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, is she so shy? Is she going to be okay? And she was, you know, she was wonderful for her. So I'm sure it'll be wonderful for my my middle too. Yeah. I hope. Yeah, I'm, yeah, they'll they'll find their own way. You know, um, I suppose everybody does. Most people do. I suppose everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be. I don't know. You're very. You're you're really great cheerleader. You know what? Um, I've learned not to be very positive to people because at some point people don't believe it. Like I have, there's yeah. a limited amount of positivity I can put out before people think I'm just being mean. So, yeah. but I don't know. I I uh, I've yeah. I feel like um yeah. People find that I like. I don't know. I remember when I went to college, I had never had any friends until I went to college. Like I just like grade school, high school, all that stuff was hell for me. And then it was like in college, you just find people that 
I don't know. There's just like a water, wider range of people to interact with, you know. My, that was, my son was just texting oh, okay. me. I was just responding to my son texting me mysteriously. What, listening back to yourself from six months ago, was there anything that surprised you about, you know, about hearing yourself back then? This is going to sound so weird. It didn't. I was. It. It. I know this. This must be unnatural. There must be something wrong. It's all right. But I'm. I really feel like. Well. I. I. I feel like. I. At some point last fall, I sort of set myself on a path mm-hmm. with this job, with this kind of how I was going to be with my kids, how I was going to be with my parents, mm-hmm. how I was going to be with my girlfriend, like how I was going to spend my time. Even in the uncertainty of the pandemic, I felt like okay, I have this this going on, and I know what you know. I know kind of know what the next period of time looks like and seemed like at least for the the six months since we talked I did I had a pretty good clear sense and it's actually gone relatively according to plan thank goodness and so I was not I think I was surprised at how confident I was that Queen Elizabeth would die uh, <laughs> again it- but which I still think I still think I'm sort of like I'm definitely 50% right because Philip right. died but I really do think that she's gonna she's gonna, she's gonna die sooner than people again think. it's not a bold prediction because they're like Philip was like like 90 something and she's even older so it's like it's you know yeah it's 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 a fair it's a solid bet you know so you should feel confident about it i guess uh, but um but yeah it sounds like you you set some goals for yourself and then you've been able to kind of stay on those goals and achieve those goals and that's you know that's great i mean that's so much more a lot of the people we talk to you know they set goals and then it was just like then that they just evaporated for whatever reason the world shifted or their, their priority shifted or whatever and it's it's great that you have been able to keep on well track. i think if you if you talk to me at any six months like what's i think what's the, the surprising thing to me is 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 that it, it remained so steady mm-hmm. because if you talk to me at any six month period before that for the past four years i would have been extremely surprised and unsettled by what that had happened in the intervening six months that like i had you know whether it was my marriage collapsing whether it was job uh changing whether it was you know child heading off to college whether it was uh, a, a pandemic hitting whatever it was there had been a huge disruption that had radically reshaped my understanding of myself and what i was doing mm-hmm. and it just happens that for whatever reason you hit me at like a super placid <laughs> six months like that this has been the six months which have gone like more or less according to the routine which had not been true for the previous eight stretches of six mm-hmm. months so um it's weird and also i guess i guess you know if you're talking to i have a job i have a job with a like a salary and I, I get have you know uh, the, your British audience one you know I have a W two income right. and like when you have a job where you get a salary and W two income like that tends to mostly the if you're that tends to continue more or less the same month after mm-hmm. month um, whereas if you're a creative person who's like in a creative profession and you're like oh I'm working on my movie or I'm working on my this project then the things r- radically shift because right. something falls through or something comes through and when you have just like a job it doesn't change as much I think and from your work perspective. Yeah. But then again, you're you're doing a startup that's incredibly chaotic and potentially can just, you know, like the way the nature of startups is that some to the very volatile. And but yeah, I mean, I think it's it sounds great that, you know, you've had a tumultuous, as you said, eight, six months before that, uh, four years before there. So, you know, and it's nice. Glad, I'm glad that you have had a more like steady six months that have been like not I don't know like if you've been constantly in this state of anxiety of just like waiting for the other shoe to drop for years and then you've just had six months of just like all right I'm cautiously optimistic about <laughs> you know as you say knock on wood uh, about the future like that's great man I'm like that's some stoked for you that's awesome thanks no it's been it's it's good I mean I I do feel really lucky it's been a, such a hard period for so many people yeah. and I think I've been unbelievably lucky as I've been throughout my luck life I've been really really lucky mm. so I'll, I will uh, thank the universe <laughs> that's good is there anything you wish you had known six months ago that you know now mm. It's okay if you don't. I mean, it's like you know what you know. What, actually, you know, I just realized the biggest thing that happened to me in the past six What's months. What's that? I was just like, so it's gonna sound stupid. So I, when I moved into this apartment, so I moved into this apartment after you know living in my house twenty years with my then wife. Mm-hmm. We broke up, and I moved into this apartment, and we had two cats at the apartment at the house, and they were always more my cats than anybody else's. I was the only cat person. It was these two twin with two girl cats from the same mm-hmm. litter, sisters who'd grown up and been lived with us for fourteen years, and they had. 
not, they had literally not left that house for the previous eight years. They hadn't gone outside. They'd been in the house, like, since before Barack Obama was elected president. Sure. Um, and, <laughs> you know what? And then there was, <laughs> was like, this is, the Trump administration was a good time to stay inside the house. Yeah, it's true. It's true for them. And so there's this question about, like, will the cats come with me or would they stay in the house? Because the house is their home. On the other hand, I really cared about them and my ex dad didn't really care about them. Hmm. And I decided to take them. And after, like, a brief adjustment period, they really did okay. But one of them, the, so there are two, Timmy and Tulip, both girls. And Timmy in in January died. Oh, I'm so um, sorry. She kind of wasted away. And it was terrible. It was really sad. So I had to have her put down. And I, it just, like, broke me. It was so terrible because she had made this place, this new home of mine, a mm-hmm. home. Like, it was as much as, like, my kids being here and, and my clothes being here and my cats being here. And the cats, like, they're, them being here with me was... And because my kids are only with me half the time, so a lot of the time I was just here alone with the mm-hmm. cat. And they made it a home for me. And losing Timmy was really sad. And what's happened is that Tulip, the other one, has become, an, an like, my best friend. She's my best friend. Really? She's, she's with me all the time. She is so affectionate. And she, like, sleeps on me. She comes and sits with me while I'm working. And it's just wonderful. I love it. It's made me so happy having her. And that's a, that is a shift in the last six months that has been, like, it was this terrible mm-hmm. loss. Timmy's loss was really terrible. And then Tulip kind of flowering and not sinking into a depression instead being just a really great, great cat companion has been wonderful. That's so sweet. Yeah, that's really nice. Which was Tulip, wait, Tulip's the one that's... Tulip's, Tulip's alive. Was Timmy's it dad. Tulip, was Tulip that affectionate before or was she kind of more, no? Not nearly as much. She was affectionate, but not nearly, not nearly to the same yeah. degree. And it's now she just, she's, um, she's not sitting on me at the moment, but yeah. she normally... <laughs> no, I saw her walk me. in front of the camera a couple of times. So she clearly yeah. mentioned. That's beautiful. Yeah, I, um, no, I, I totally get that because I had a pair of cats that I got in 2003 and I moved them from Seattle to Tennessee and you know I had them for a decade or so and one of them passed away and then the other one yeah it was similar he became a lot more affectionate and then it was a thing where when I moved to the UK I was like because putting the other one down yeah it broke me too I was like I sobbed like my girlfriend had to drive me home and I I could because I couldn't even control myself like I was just a wreck and I've never like I cried like I don't think I've ever cried before and and, and then, yeah, the other one, I was like, I'm definitely cannot leave him in America. So we moved him to the UK. And yeah, he was so much more like affectionate just being the one cat. He was always like, if I sat down for even a minute, he was on my lap, you know, so affectionate, so loving. I unfortunately lost that cat after 17 years. I lost him in November 2019. And um, that was a really huge right. blow. Thankfully, he didn't like he was he was in such good health for being such an older cat. because He was 18, 19 years old. And then it was only just the last week that he suffered and before we put him down thankfully that was a that was a blessing but but that's that's wonderful about tulip i i, I think that that that's so sweet and that's it is it is it does really because i you know i had those cats through a couple breakups and a divorce and new relationships and moving various places and it does make a huge difference to have you know yeah. your pets the things that you love that's 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 beautiful man i think that's a great <laughs> that's great i love that yeah. um and yeah i'm sorry about timmy but um i understand how that is so i guess david finally uh just what's next for you uh i don't know i mean things are okay nothing i'm going to continue working on city cast hopefully city cast will grow and grow and grow mm-hmm. continue to the gab fest hopefully the gab fest will continue to bring pleasure and and infotainment to its <laughs> listeners and i you know will be still living in washington with with my one son who's home and hopefully my kids will thrive at college and hopefully things will remain really nice with my girlfriend yeah i i, I there's no i don't there's no the plan is the plan is the same as it was six months ago and hopefully when we check in every six months as i'm sure we will <laughs> yeah uh it will be it will be the same that's excellent so yeah thanks david so people want to check you out they should check out your work at citycastfm.fm yes citycast.fm and the slate political yep. gab fest and then where else could people find you if they want to find you online or if they want uh, to you can work? always reach me on twitter at, at david plots excellent. and my email address is david at gmail.com if you want to email me okay <laughs> Uh, my social security Since number is... No, 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 David, David. <laughs> it's all right. Six months later, it's like was my identity was stolen. I have no money left. <laughs> my credit rating is garbage. <laughs> uh, so have you guys have you guys aired anything? Yeah, we yet? have. Yeah. You are our 22nd episode. Oh, so when you talked to me the first time, you were just about to start the first... You're about to start release them because you hadn't released any the first time yeah, you talked to me. Yeah, we started in the beginning of January. And yeah, we've been doing pretty well. I, I will always have a special place in my heart for yourself and other people who... Who, like their first 26 guests 
who had no evidence that a podcast existed, right. <laughs> but still agreed to talk to us. And I will. So thank you so much for that. I think it's, I just genuinely think it's a great oh, thank idea. You so much. I think it's a really, really, really good idea. And like, honestly, I mean, as a, as somebody who believes that seven up is the most important work of, of art that's been created mm. in our time. I love the idea of having like a mini seven up, but I think you should do, you should try to do it seriously. Check back with people in two years. If it's, if you can yeah, yeah. just to see, because it's, it's a great question and everyone one's curious i i mean one of the things i've been going i've been um we're cleaning out my ex-wife and i are cleaning out the house because we're selling the house so i've spent the last week kind of excavating all kinds of shit and pulling up like you know whatever books that you don't want anymore but also uh, lots of old photographs and i found a journal that i kept back when i was 20 uh and it's so interesting just to get a window on yourself at a different moment mm. and as it happens the window of me six months ago and the window of me today are not that different or interesting so <laughs> you know shit makes for a shitty podcast no, for you so. but in general it's just a just a, incredible and like where we're consistent where we're inconsistent what we think is going to happen yeah. is great so i think it's such a good idea for a pod and i hope you i really hope it succeeds and i really hope it, it takes off and I, I do hope that you consider like bringing people back after some other gap just to check in. yeah that's them. the thing that we had we had kind of thought about maybe like reaching out to people in a further six months or in a year or something and you know maybe like one guest a month we'll bring back after years but yeah so because i mean th- that was the original concept it was like one year later but then it seemed like that was way too long like doing six months is kind of the limit mm. i think that i don't know that my mind can comprehend oh just make sure you, when you know when this is going to come let me know when it comes out and i will happily talk about it on the gab Fest oh wow thanks so much that would be some, amazing some audience uh, yeah no I, i'd love to oh yeah yeah i will uh, i will definitely i'll send you an email oh that would be so amazing no no thank you like gave me a chance to talk about myself and think about things so oh I'm, I'm glad that you've enjoyed this experience and it's been such a pleasure and and yeah it's like i said uh, it's like you said you know like we're in the first half i've listened to the gab fest for years i enjoyed immensely i think you guys are like three of the most interesting people ever it's so much fun to listen to so i'm i'm so honored that you would even be on our podcast that again you had no evidence existed six months ago (laughs) so (laughs) i i think it's gonna i think it's gonna work i think it's gonna succeed thanks so much man good luck wait i gotta let my kid take care bye So how's that? Uh, how's that new TV going? Are you still enjoying it? Oh, it's so great! It's so good. The quality of stuff—it's so high quality. I was watching the movie Lady Hawk the other day. It looked amazing. <laughs> it was just, you know, uh, what, yeah. What it, is Lady Hawk? Well, I'm glad you asked her. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's a movie from the 80s that has Rutger Hauer and Michelle Pfeiffer and Matthew Broderick. And it's set in medieval times. And during the day, she is a hawk. But at night, he turns into a wolf. And they're because they're cursed. And then the, the whole movie is them trying to figure out how to how to stop the curse with Matthew Broderick's help. I don't know how it ends. Don't spoil it for me. But <laughs> I haven't finished it yet. But it looked really great on uh, the 4K TV. The 4K experience has not gotten old. So that is good. Oh, that's awesome. I love, I think Michelle Pfeiffer is probably one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. Like in she, the world, I think yeah. she's just exceptionally beautiful. She is. And um, she's, this is like very early Michelle Pfeiffer. So she's just like, I don't know. So young. Yeah, so young and also so beautiful. And just like, you're just like, ah, crazy. I think even Mm -hmm. now, like, because she must be, well, I don't know how much, how old she is, probably in her 60s or 70s. I don't know. Yeah, she looks good. But however old she is, she still looks really beautiful. Who is she in? She was in Murder in the Orient Express. And then she was in, I think, the Ant-Man movies. I think she's in the Ant-Man movies or something. But she's she's really good. Yeah, she still looks great. Yeah. Yeah, she's an amazing, uh, amazing woman. Also, she looks really good as a hawk. So Great. (laughs) Even in the even in the form of a hawk, she looks uh, stunning. Is your life still <laughs> the same routine as it has been for the last six months? No, it was funny listening back. You know how obviously how little I had going on. I feel almost not envious of that time, but it's like wow, life is just so busy and hectic now, and I feel constantly like I'm just trying to stay on top of the amount of stuff I have to do, like work wise, study wise, just you know. Uh, with the boys and I was like gosh it's amazing how simple (laughs) how simple that (laughs) life was during lockdown where you could literally just I don't know you were just sort of just living day to day like like "Hmm, I'll do some DIY now I um, (laughs) am it was a big day if you went for a walk (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we took the boys to Australia House yesterday to get their passports done. So I thought that was nice with the with the uh, passport, the thing of wanting to be in Australia. It's like, oh, we are oh, making yeah. some progress on that. So they're getting their passports sorted. They loved being in London. We took them to the uh, London Eye. Oh, and nice. we took them to the Natural History Museum to see the dinosaur exhibit, which they absolutely loved. Oh, that's good. So yeah, it was a really fun day and kind of a nice thing to overcome that fear of taking them to the city because obviously they're still quite small like Sammy's just over two Mm -hmm. and you can be like oh it's just so hectic but it was it was actually you know not very busy because obviously there are still restrictions and stuff so Mm -hmm. it was nice to get to enjoy this probably quite rare time where you can enjoy London but not Mm -hmm. be it's not packed you know like we were on the London 9 it was easy to book a ticket you know last minute and stuff oh cool how about you how have things been for you things are good you know same old see we're in like a very much a routine of like going to baby classes and just dealing with like we're working around Tavish's schedule now you know just going to bed at eight because that's when he goes to bed <laughs> and all that kind of thing but yeah uh yeah it, it's funny i said i i thought i would be sick of my parents by now because I thought oh, yeah they'd, they'd probably be here to see the baby but uh they haven't made it over yet and we couldn't go to visit them but they are coming in january no january they're coming in july so they're coming july 6th for like a month oh so, that's nice so that'll be nice and it'll be good to see them and it'll be exciting for them to see the baby so very much looking forward to that so that's the next big thing to look forward to and yeah but i don't know other than that it's been a pretty boring uh a week or so alice is putting a pond into the yard that's been very exciting that's yeah i mean our will f- flooring finally got finished finished yesterday so Exciting. that's a, a huge celebration that that is that's been a very long uh, ongoing project yes how does that look it looks beautiful like i i'll have to send you some photos because it has okay. definitely made made the house feel just so much more modern and yeah it really does make a massive difference flooring like it really changes the yeah. energy <laughs> <laughs> sure. of the place anyway i just okay. wondered um I think the things, you know, things do seem a bit warmer and a bit nicer and vaccinations are seemingly better and things are getting it. The the whole thing of, you know, the Indian variant getting uh, more widespread is a bit worrying, but I I feel just so desperate to like, I'm just like, we just got to get out of here, man. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Got to get out. (laughs) I can't take it anymore. Uh, I can. uh, I can. You're going stir crazy in there. You're just like. Just need to get to Australia, as I was saying six months ago. And I'm still saying. (laughs) Still saying. (laughs) Soon, soon, soon. You you, you did a big step. How long does it take to get the boys' passports then? So it's going to take three to four weeks now for them. The applications have to go over to Australia and then they'll come back. But I should have my passport arriving any day now. And then, you know, it's been that's been a long process of getting their citizenships and then the Mm -hmm. appointments and all that stuff. And yeah. So, yeah, hopefully fingers crossed that will all go ahead and we can book our tickets soon exciting okay god i always forget how we're meant to end this uh outro well i hope that everybody is doing well wherever you are in the world that you're coping not just coping thriving i hope you're thriving thriving in whatever it is you're doing we're past the surviving portion of the pandemic let's get back into thriving guys let's get back on our goals (laughs) yeah (laughs) or not or whatever just be like oh those goals were stupid i'm gonna make new goals here's a great new goal is if you could rate, review, subscribe to the podcast. It's a simple thing you can do that'll make you feel better about yourself and make you feel better about the podcast. And it will make it will make us at the podcast feel better. And that would be great. And tell a friend. That's a great. Those are just two goals. If you'd accomplish any either of those, you can feel like a real winner. And hey, eat a whole Sunday. Ooh, if, you, yeah. people want, if people want to follow us, they can do that at six months later pod on all the things. Or you can just send us an email direct at six months later pod at gmail.com. And and Tara, if people want to follow you, where can they do that? Uh, you can find me on Tara NW Comedy on all the stuff. What about you, Matt? I am M. Shadorn on Instagram. You can see some pictures of my baby and my cats. I'm not much on social media, but I do make other media. I have another podcast called Comedy Killed the Video Star and another one called Same Misbehaving. I don't know what they are because I haven't recorded them yet. So just uh, check them both out. They're both very fun podcasts where I talk funny people about funny things. As opposed to this one where I just talk to Tara. Hey. Uh, I'm just kidding. But yeah, but thanks everybody for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next week. In six months. Take it easy. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) 
love it. Fantastic. <laughs> oh my God. You have dug yourself the deepest hole <laughs> of any market. How bad can it be?